All right, we're going to do 7 3 and 7 5 together, and we're going to use the same formula for both sections. The formula that we're going to use, or the equation, I guess I should say, not formula, is the percent over 100, because we know that we can write any percentage as the number over 100, equals is over of. And what is over of means is what we talked about yesterday, which is what percentage is. Percentage is the part over the whole. Okay. So in both 7.3 and 7.5, we're going to be given these little mini sentences, and we're going to have to solve the equation. And for every single one of them, we are going to use the P over 100 equals is over of. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to pick out what is is, what is of. And of course, the percentage is easy because when you have a problem that literally has a number with a percent sign on it, that's obviously the percentage. Okay. Now, you'll notice in this equation, the 100 is always there. That is the fixed number that never changes. The percentage, the is and the of are given information that can change. You're only gonna be given two and you have to solve for the missing one. And we know how to do this because when we have something missing in our uh, fractions, we just do the butterfly, okay? Or we cross multiply. So we're gonna be given two bits of information. We're gonna be missing one piece and then we have to set up the equation and solve it. So if we're not given a number with a percentage sign stuck to it, that automatically tells you that you're missing part of the problem. And we're just going to do this here because we're going to use this as a formula. Our missing part of the problem is obviously the percentage. So this says 128 is what percent? Well, there's our question. Anytime you see the question, that tells you what you're hunting for. What percent of 640? 128 is what percent of 640? Well, I already know my percent's my unknown. So in my equation, my unknown is going to be in place of the P or the percent. On the other side, I need to determine which is my is and which is my of. Okay, and it's pretty straightforward. Literally, when you see of a number, that's your of. The is can sometimes it can be worded differently where the is is before or after the number, but the of is I can't think of a time where it would be worded differently that the of is not right behind the of, okay? So in this case, we would plug 640 in for the of, and then it says 128 is. So 128 is our is. And I know that sounds funny, but like I said, this formula has stuck with me since I was taught it when I was 13 years old. And I, I've just, I've always used it. I used it through high school. I used it through college. I use it in my adult life when I'm going to the store or figuring out, you know, sale prices or whatever. I know some of your IXLs that you struggled with a couple of weeks ago it was because they were a little ahead of the time. Um, we hadn't covered it yet, um, but you can figure out sale prices. You can figure out uh, any kind of percentages like that. Okay. So now when we're here, you guys know how to do this. We cross multiply with our X. So we get 640 X. We cross multiply the other way and we get 128 times 100, which is 12,800. And then to solve for X, we just simply divide by whatever's attached to it. And so our answer here is X equals, and if you put 1,200 or 12,800 divided by 640, we get 20. Now, what did we solve for here? So you got to stick the percentage sign on the end of it. it. The only time you have to add something to your answer is when you're solving for percent. If you're solving for is over of, I shouldn't say that. If you're solving for is or of, you don't have to worry about um, labeling it with anything, okay? Now, again, I said is over of, it's really part over whole. That's what it stands for. But because these sentences aren't worded, what part of this whole, it's just so much easier to remember is over of, okay? Because that's how your sentences are, is always, are always gonna be worded, okay? Um, all right, so let's look at number two. It's very similar to number one, okay? What percent, so right there, there's our question, what percent? So what do we know automatically? What are we solving for? Okay, so we automatically know, we don't know the percent. We're gonna put X over 100. <laughs> Now on the other side, we need to figure out which one is is and which one is of. It's literally as easy as of 21. So 21 is your of, is 28. 
So 28 is your is. Okay. And then again, I'll go this part kind of quick. We cross multiply. We get 21x. We cross multiply the other way. We get 2,800. We divide by 21 to get x by itself. And our final answer is what? 2,800 divided by 21 equals. Now our answer we get is 133.3333333. Now what do our directions say? Nearest tent. So here's our tent spot, right? Rounded is determined by our hundred spot, tells us what to do with our tent spot. So our final answer here would be 133.3. Three what percent because we solve for percent okay so 133.3 percent of 21 is 28 okay all right so let's look at one where we're given some different information we have 12 is 80 percent of what number so right off the bat we have a number with an with a percent attached to it so right here, that tells us we can write 80 over 100. Now we got to figure out is or of. Which one are we given? Which one are we not given? Perfect. We were given is. We weren't given of. Because it says of what number? So that's our unknown. And again, at this point, right, I feel like we're kind of beating a dead horse at this point. Cross multiply. 80x equals cross multiply the other way 1200 divide by 80 divide by 80 and we get perfect 15. now we're not solving for percent this is just simply a number so there's your answer so 12 is 80 percent of 15. does that kind of make sense to you when you're thinking about what percentages mean 12 is 80% of 15. Sounds pretty legit, right? Okay. Um, don't let decimals freak you out. Okay. I'm not going to, well, yeah, we can work this one. It won't take but a second. Um, setting it up. Look what I'm given 36%. So right off the bat, I know I can do 36 over 100, right? Because I'm given my percent. Now I need to decide if I'm given is or of. What do you think? Yep. Given is, right? 0.24 is, and then we have this of what number? So of is my unknown. Pardon this interruption. At this time, Songstead members are now returning to class. Songstead members are returning to class. We cross multiply and we get 36x. We cross multiply the other way. And if you need to put it in your calculator, you can, but 100 times 0.24 is 24. Divide by 36 and divide by 36. And we get that X equals, and it's gonna be a decimal because you have a smaller number on top and that's okay. There's what? An L. What's that mean? Oh, it's, it's probably because it's, it's a 0.6666666 forever. So your answer is 0.6666 repeating forever, but we know that we are gonna round to the 10th, right? So this is our 10th spot dictated by our 100th spot. So our answer is going to be 0.7, good. Very good. Well, we didn't solve for percent. So for number nine, right, we solved for of, we were given 80%. So we solved for up. For number 12, we solved for up of yep the only time you have to per, put, uh, put a percent on the end of your answer is if you're solving four yeah, percent just take a second at the end to look at what you solve for okay percent is or of if you solve for a percent make your answer a percent so I'm supposed to be like that very long. it is no, the, this is this like is it this is as hard as it gets they were, they were joking and your worksheet does have 58 problems on it. I give you 12. You circle 12. Okay. I'm not sending you out the door. I wouldn't even send you out the door with half of 58. Because for these, I feel like once you do a couple of each kind, 
it just never gets harder. And this is why I said, this has literally stuck with me my whole life because my, my teacher taught me this and she explained the whole, it's a part over a whole and all of that. But when you're given the sentence, part and whole are not in the sentence, but is and of always are. So if you know is over of, you don't have to think so hard about which one's the part and which one's the whole and maybe get them wrong. You just have to look at which one's is and of. And I think that's why it stuck with me all these years. So if you, like I said, if you look at the IXLs that you guys were doing for, for Ms. Hain, and it was, you've got a, a uh, item that costs $50 and it's 20% off, ask yourself, what is 20% off of 50? You've got your is and your of, you've got your percentage. Very easy to set up. No matter what life situation you're in, whether you're doing a problem for another class or whether or not you really are at the store trying to figure out if you've got enough cash to buy the video game and it's on sale and it's 25% off, you can very easily do a quick is over of and figure out if you've got enough cash on you. So like I said, I'm usually pretty honest with you about when will you ever use this in life? And sometimes I'm honest and I say, probably never. This one, you probably will. Okay. All right. Um, all right. What is 65% of 441.1? What am I given right off the bat? I'm given my of and what else? Yeah. Well, nope. Look at look, what do I always look for first? Yeah. My first fraction is always my percent. So am I given a percent number? I am. So I can set up my first side is always my percent. And then between the other two, I just have to decide is over of, well, what is, so my is is unknown, my of goes on the bottom. Whoops, got a little crazy there. There we go. No matter where your variable is at in the ratios, right? You still just cross multiply your X. So we get hundred X equals, Cross multiply the other way, and you're going to get a giant number at first, and that's okay. Don't let it freak you out. That's why we have calculators. Times 65 equals 28671.5. All right, when we divide this by 100 and divide this by 100, okay, if you need to put it in the calculator, you can, but basically dividing by 100 moves your decimal point over two spots. So your answer here is going to be 286.715. Now, do our directions say to, to round? <laughs> yep, we're rounding to the 10th, dictated by the 100th. So we would get 286.7, and that would be your answer. We didn't solve for percent, so we're good just circling the number. All right, good with that side. Okay, the back side, flip it over. We're not going to do all of these because it is literally the exact same thing. And the book has you using a different formula. And really, it's, it's not a different formula. It is taking this formula and like, instead of having P over 100 equals is over of, it has the part equals and then the whole rest of it's a different, it's, it's this exact same equation rearranged. There's no need to rearrange it because then that's memorizing too. Why rearrange it when we can use the exact same equation for these? Okay, does this look familiar? What is 5% of 224? Yes. Um, yeah, I can show it to you. I wouldn't write it down and get all confused, but I can show it to you. Um, it's basically just rearranging the P, the 100, and the part in the whole. And it is, let's see. It is part equals percent times whole. Whoops, let me do this. I wrote whole wrong. And it's not a harder one, okay? Part equals percent times whole. Um, and then like if you're given percent, then you have to multiply these two. And then if you're given, if you're given whole, you got to divide. It still ends up being the exact same thing. And I'll show you why. Okay. If we're given, first of all, you have to decide which one's the part and which one's the whole rather than is and of. So there's a little bit of more of a challenge of just figuring out which one is the part and which one is the whole, right? So what is 5% of 224? 
Well, the whole is the 224 because your of is always the whole. They don't tell you, oh yeah, they tell you the percent. So it's 5%, but you can't just use 5%. You have to turn 5% into a decimal. So you got to go backwards. So it's 0 0.05 equals, and then you're solving for the part. Okay. And then you, do you see why it's so much extra work? You have to memorize another equation. You have to convert your percentage to decimals and you have to decide which one is the part and which one is the whole all to do the exact same thing that we do using the is over of. So that's why I stick with the is over of, okay? Is harder than we ever do that in like high school? This, no, okay. no. You will always be able to use, that's why I said the is over of served me all the way through high school, all the way through college and then through life. So, all right, so what is, 5% of 224, well, we're given five over 100 and we're not given is, but we are given of. Then we cross multiply and solve. I'm not even gonna work it out. Okay, I'm just gonna set up a couple of them for you. Now, I do want to show you number nine because it looks a little different. Don't let it, it's not different. First of all, are you given a percentage? Yeah. So we know we can do 5.6 over 100, right? That's easy. Now, is or of? There is not the word is in here, but is there an of? Okay. It's just worded a little different. Instead of saying find 5% of 1050, could I say what is 5% of 1050? It's still an is over of. It's just worded a little different. But the thing that'll never change is of, which is why it's very easy to always know which goes where, okay? And then again, on this one, I'll just work it really quickly. You might end up with some bigger numbers. It's fine, 100 times X equals, if you take 1,050 times 5.6, you get uh, 5880. <laughs> But when I divide by 100 and divide by 100, I get X equals 58.8. And that'd be my answer. Okay. So <clears throat> I just don't, I don't think we need to memorize another equation. And I certainly don't think we need to go to all the mental gymnastics of figuring out which one's the part, which one's the whole, converting our percent to a um, decimal and then still getting the same answer when we can just use it the same way. So I decided to skip all that. You will never need all of that. Um, as long as you know the is over of, you're good. All right, uh, 48 is what percent of 75? Do I know my percent here? I'm asked what percent, so I know it's gonna be X over 100. What's my is? What's my of? Okay, good. For number 17, am I given my percent? So it's X over 100. What's my is? 0.4. What's my of? And that's it, folks. Um, 3,570 is 42% of what number? So 42 over 100. What's my is? What's my of? Yeah, don't know it. Of what number? That's my question. My of is an X. Okay, eight is 1% of, 1%. So that's one over 100. Eight is of what number? Of is my unknown. And that's it. And on your homework, you have 12 problems out of the 58. So as a bonus, what percent of your problems am I giving you? All right. Um, I did, the first hour did ask if they did more problems, could they get bonus points? I would be fine with that um, if you feel froggy and you wanna do more than the 12, you certainly can, but you do not have to, okay? Um, for those of you at home, after you've taken notes, try your homework. If you have any questions, let me know.